Hey friends, all right, so today I thought I would show you, um, yeah, this tweet um, from Jamie Kyle. Uh, it says, more and more I'm landing on, all design systems, including React ones, should be consumable with just CSS classes, aka uh, you should not write a design system with CSS and JS. Um, I actually um, agree with this. Uh, I've, so I've been working on uh, this thing at PayPal called PP React, which is re um, PayPal's React component library, and um, really gung ho about uh, Emotion SH. I also uh, built PayPal's um, PayPal Scripts, which is the foundational tool for all of PayPal apps um, that choose to use it, and um, the, the sample app that like PayPal apps start with um, has Emotion pre-installed. So. Uh, definitely, I, I want to preface all of this by saying um, Emotion is how I want to write application um, uh, CSS. And I'll show you how to use Emotion with a, a component library that's based on regular CSS. But um, I, I'm really in agreement with Jamie here that it's um, uh, building a component library should be built with consumable, like regular CSS classes. And so, um, this is actually interesting timing because I've been wanting to talk about this and Guy um, LePage um, just asked me about this on Twitter today and so I asked him to um, put this in, in the form of a, uh, a question on my AMA. Uh, Guy was referencing this lesson that I have on Egghead about styling React components with a class name and inline styles. This is a like, foundational, really important thing that you need to understand and learn. Um, and so I, I teach you how to do this, um, and you can find this at kcd.im slash beginner react and, uh, and go check it out over there. Um, but yeah, so I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been building, um, building out a, a framework that actually does this. So I thought I'd show you really quick um, how kind of generally, typically how this works. So at PayPal, we have VX underscore BTN for our buttons and stuff and all of those class names. But I don't want to litter those class names throughout my code base. And so what I do is um, we create a simple function component that um, accepts props and then determines what class names to apply based on those props. It's actually really simple. So um, to facilitate making this really easy, we use this package called CLSX. If you've heard of class name, uh, the class name package, this is basically like that, except it's much smaller and much faster. Uh, so it can do all the same things. And so um, each argument uh, represents a class or a uh, set of classes that could be applied uh, and concatenated into a single string of class names. So uh, we accept the class name that you provide us if you want to do some overrides or whatever, however you want to do that. This will become really important when I show you how this integrates with Emotion. Um, and then we also allow, uh, well, so here in CLSX, as a second argument, we say, okay, this is the base class, uh, class name for this button component. And then um, also CLSX allows you to pass an object where the key represents a class name you want applied and the value uh, represents, uh, or if the value is truthy, um, then that class name will be applied. If it's falsy, it will not. Um, and so that's what gets us these um, uh, these buttons here. Uh, and then we just take the rest of the props and forward them on so you can treat this like a regular button. Uh, to make this even better, we probably be a good idea to do um, react.forward uh, ref um, and then pass the button and then this can be ref and we'll say ref equals ref. Um, so that, that makes it even better. Now we, you can treat this just like it's a regular button. Um, and uh, yeah, so the way that this is used is um, you just use it like a regular button. I can do on click um, and we'll alert clicked first. And then we go here and we click on it and it works um, just like a regular button. And so uh, the users of this component library don't have to know that it's using class names. They don't have to know it's using CSS um, because the uh, file here itself is importing the CSS. So the, the one caveat to all of this is anybody who consumes this must have a CSS loader. 
um, otherwise it won't work. And in um, PP React, we build with rollup, and um, I basically say any CSS import um, does not get bundled. It'll just be treated as an external dependency, and then you have to make sure that you ship those uh, CSS files as dependencies to your package, or just make sure that those are included um, if they're relative, um, so that uh, um, these imports will work uh, with Webpack when the, whoever's consuming your stuff is using Webpack. Um, so you can do this a different way. You could just say, hey, you have to have that imported. Um, and then whoever's consuming your library could come in here and, and just they would have to import those class names. Um, but I don't like that because um, one of the real tricks of CSS is uh, knowing how much CSS you need to include. And so what ends up happening is you say, OK, here are all of the components. And if you're using this component, then you need this CSS. If you're using that one, you use this. And here we'll do a couple presets and whatever. Like It just gets so complicated. Um, and people just end up saying, oh, I'll just include the whole thing. And now you're shipping 80% CSS that's not being used, which is the current state of many PayPal apps. So. Um, by putting it in here, then we're just importing it um, and taking care of it for you, and you don't even have to think about it. Um, and then so long as you're only importing the things that you're actually using, uh, then you'll only get the uh, you'll only pay for the code that you actually need. Now, um, there is a, a slight challenge to this in that um, I, I don't want to have to like import button from um, button and import table from table and so on and so forth. I'd rather say import button and table from um, comp library, whatever, whatever you're going to call it. Um, and so what I do is I have a video. Let's see. Uh, yeah, component library tree shaking CSS solution um, where well, and actually you might want to watch the problem first. But uh, yeah, so you go to kcd.im slash dev tips. You can watch those to see um, how I or why uh, doing this is required, why this is a problem, and how to uh, allow people to write it like this, but still get the benefits of uh, writing it like this. So you can uh, go look at how that all works later. But um, with that solution in place, which is just a Babel preset, it's pretty straightforward. Um, once you have that solution in place, then you can have like tree shakeable and uh, code splittable CSS, which is really awesome. Um, and it solves like all, all of the major problems that I have with uh, regular CSS. Um, so I, like I said at the beginning, I'm still really, really gung-ho about CSS and JS for applications. And so let me show you that. Um, so here is my component library, the button stuff. And then here is my application. Now, let's say I wanted to override this button or something like that, or, or if I have an edge case. So let's make this a div. And I have an edge case. I want to like give this some margin or something. Um, then I can just say, uh, because I have Emotion installed and I'm using the Babel plugin, uh, or I'm, even if I'm not using the Babel plugin, if I have this um, JSX thing up at the top, uh, this works in Create React App, but it'd be better to use the Babel plugin then you don't have to do any of this nonsense. But um, either way, once you have that situated, then you can use the CSS prop and you can say margin 20 uh, and then you get that margin. And what's cool about this, like, yes, of course, you can use style here as well. But what's cool about this is uh, you can use media queries and I'm not good enough at media queries to rattle one off really quick. So instead, I'll use a... Um, uh, you can also use stuff like uh, do, 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 hover and color, or let's see, background color gray. Um, and so that is why it's kind of neat to um, use the CSS prop because it gives you the power of all of CSS that you care about. Um, and if you don't like using objects for your CSS, which is totally fine, some people don't, then you can import CSS like this. And then do CSS and backticks and margin 20 and hover uh, color gray. And um, I think maybe we have to do that. No, I don't know how to write this thing, but mm, something. I'm not sure what uh, what's going on there. So you figure out how to write CSS in a string. I know it's possible. I've seen people do it. I just never do. 
Um, so anyway, well, the I mentioned earlier that um, the fact that the button accepts a class name and it adds that here is important. And that's because the way that the CSS prop works is it actually just creates a class name and gives that as the prop. And so you can do CSS color is red. And then because we're applying the, um, the class name that is being passed, this gets converted into a class name that gets passed to the button. The button applies it with CLSX and then we get um, our overrides there. So component libraries use CSS, it works great. Applications uh, use emotion and that works great. Um, and the, the server rendering story for component libraries that use um, regular CSS is unfinished uh, as far as I know, but I, I can foresee a situation where you hijack, um, well, you, you use this deprecated thing in Node called require.extensions to say anytime somebody tries to require uh, CSS, we're going to put this into a singleton. Um, and then we say, hey, get me all the CSS that was required, all those CSS files. And then you give it back to them and they can put that, render that as part of their HTML. I think it's like a really solvable problem. Um, there already is a package, um, ignore CSS, I think is what, it, um, what it's called. Yeah, so it ignores CSS requires server-side, published four years ago. It doesn't need to be changed because it's so simple. Um, but I'll show you what it does. Oh, that's interesting. This is not what I, there, there's, another, uh, there's another package that was a lot more complex. It included CSS and, and SAS and style and all, all, a whole bunch of others. I'm not sure where it is, but um, yeah. So all, all it really does is says require extension CSS. Um, it does nothing. And, um, and that's all, it's pretty simple. Um, so you could presumably, instead of doing nothing, you would um, go look up that file, read the file, and, um, and then provide a mechanism to get all the CSS back so that the server renderer could uh, render that as part of their CSS if you wanted to, I don't know. Um, so I'm not too concerned about, um, about the server rendering story. So um, I, think, I think that it's worth it because it allows um, people to uh, use your CSS regardless of whether they're using React. Um, and I think that's the biggest win um, because component libraries should be um, pretty uh, technology agnostic. So at least the, the, um, the styling aspect should be, that was a big important thing for uh, PayPal and PayPal script or PP React. Uh, okay, let me just, I'm getting a lot of comments that I just barely saw. So let me answer some of those questions. Do you think it makes sense to write a component library in CSS in JS, but still out, uh, output readable class names? Ah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, people get all up in arms about how class names on the web are like a total nightmare and a mess, and I don't really care. It kind of bothers me when I want to uh, do some automation on a page or something that's kind of annoying but I actually did a, a video the other um, maybe yesterday a couple days ago about how I uh, can automate things with DOM testing library on uh, on the web which is kind of cool uh, you can check that out but yeah I don't know in, in the uh, context of the tweet does design system equal component library yes I think that's kind of what um, uh, what Jamie is talking about there uh, what UI library do you, you use mostly? I don't use UI libraries. I make them. Um, yeah. If I, yeah. I mean, I, I have never used material UI in anything. Um, yeah, I don't use UI libraries. Sorry. Um, everybody's complaining about my semicolons. Uh, oh, in the CSS? Yeah, that was probably the problem. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, here, let's go back. We'll, we'll find out. Do, 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 do. Semicolon. Ta -da. Did that fix it? Oh, and then we'll, we'll put that and thing back. Nope, no dice. I don't know what's wrong with staff. Oh, pixels, PX. There we go. Still not sure what the hover thing, why that's not working. Yeah, oh, background color. There we go. Ta-da, okay, thank you. We fixed it. Uh, before seeing this, I would have used something